Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be doing a cab mount chop on the 4Runner. As you can see, I already got it jacked up, wheel removed. I did the other side last week, so I got a little bit of experience. That side was rough. I didn't really want to record it because I was learning. This side I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through it. It's pretty... It's uh, I think I cut myself on this. It's pretty simple but it definitely requires the basic, the basis of this is simple, but the actual process takes a little bit of practice. So yeah, we'll go ahead. This is a plate I'm gonna be installing. It's a curved one, so it's super aggressive. I'm trying to fit some 35s that I got over there. I'll show you those in a little bit. But yeah, we'll go ahead, we'll get this mocked up and I'll kind of show you the, the process of it. Real quick. Just want to show you what it looks like before. I'm using the little light as a guide here. So that's the cab mount. I would assume you know what that is if you're watching this video. By the way, I have a jack stand right there. But that's the cab mount. And I'll go ahead and show you what the other side looks like. I've been driving around with it chopped and no plate. That is the other side. I painted it and then I'm also getting it welded tomorrow or the next day so i just have limited time to do this kind of thing so i had to do one last week so yeah that's what we're going to be doing i'm going to go ahead and mark it up get an idea of what i'm chopping here we are under the forerunner sorry just hit you with my mask this was what i was going to start with but i'm probably going to follow this and then this same line because it's curved but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and chop this out of the way because I have it's hard to show this I have this which is a little small and I took off the guard because uh, I struggled hardcore last time so I'm gonna go ahead and just try to remove some of the metal that's in my way I do have a face shield I got gloves, so face shield, gloves, and I'm wearing long sleeves even though it's like 85 degrees out right now. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So went ahead, cut that portion off. Now I'm going to just continue working towards the lines that I marked and I'll check back in with you. Just a quick update. Went ahead and chopped off the front. So, so far we've chopped the front off and then the bottom. And now I should be able to connect right across the top. I just want to show you that the first one oh, laying on a piece of metal. Okay. The first cuts do not have to be pretty. As you can see, mine's not very even. But where's my plate? I'm trying it. This is what we're gonna get going on here. That kind of deal. And I'm just gonna take my grinding wheel and I'm gonna make it all pretty and I'll show you guys what that looks like when I'm done on the other side I realized that I chopped this farther forward like this direction so I'm gonna go ahead and make that same chop and then hopefully I can leave the back but if not I'll have to figure out the back to make it work okay so I'm gonna go ahead and chop away some of this went ahead and 
completed the cutting process here. At least for now. I think it's where I want it to be. As close to that mount as I can get. Make sure this isn't hot here. And then this is just gonna sit. Sorry. This is just gonna sit right on top. Just to show you guys. There is a gap under there between the mount. Then just fill the weld in. If I need to do any additional cutting for the welder, I'm just having a mobile welder come and do it because it's the easiest thing that I could think of. I'll show you guys this side that I already cut. It's also painted down here. This one is just gonna go like that. So yeah, that is that. I'm gonna go ahead, throw a coat of paint on this and then yeah, I'll do an update once I get this welded on. So I just got the weld done. I had the mobile welder come. I did a little bit of grinding on it just cause the welds looked good, but I wanted to, I attempted to try to make it look OEM, but that didn't work out so well. It doesn't look terrible, but it definitely doesn't look factory. I haven't painted it yet. I just wanted to show you guys what, what's going on. So this is passenger side. Sorry about the neighbor's dog going crazy. As you can see, the top up here is a little rough, but I understand because not much room to work with. And I don't really have a way to grind that out. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it. I smoothed out this side. And then that side smooth. Go ahead and show you the driver's side. Same thing up top, looks a little rough. But the sides are looking good. Just give you an idea of the, the clearance here. So this used to stick out probably to there. Is that still warm? No. It used to probably stick out to at least here. And then, you know, it was a straight line, so. Next will be the, the pinch weld. We'll use this side. Under here, there's a pinch weld. Uh, just cut it and flatten it up to about this point right here. I'll be making a video on that when that time comes. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead, throw a coat. I'm just gonna use Rust-Oleum for now because I don't wanna do anything too, too, too permanent because I might end up getting like Dremel attachments to grind out that top and then maybe coat it with some steel it or something. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit it with some alcohol, clean it off, and then some Rust-Oleum Black, and I'll check back in when that's done. Went ahead and finished the painting on both sides here. I ended up going with, let me show you. This stuff. I was using just Rust-Oleum flat black. I ran out after doing one side, so I ran to the store real quick. Ended up picking up this. It doesn't match as well, but I think it'll be more durable. It's epoxy paint, so should hold up a little better. The downside is that I did it with the wheels on, so I couldn't, you know, paint that well. So I just got the light here to show you guys. That is the finished result, if I can get it to focus. There we go. That is what it looks like all said and done from the back. And of course the other side looks the same. I'll show you that anyway, so. Go ahead and switch this to that. That might help us out. The other side, right there. And then 
the back. So that completes the cab mount chop on the Forerunner, or cab mount, body mount chop, whatever you want to call it. So far, we've done the Viper cut right there. And now completed the cab mount chop. Sorry, I'm a little sweaty. <laughs> and that is the cab mount chop. Next will be the pinch weld uh, mod, which honestly might wait to do until I do my lift. Depends on if I wanna split it up or not. But most likely we'll do that when I do my lift because it's a, it's a very easy mod. I will, however, make sure to make it a separate video. It'll be a short one, but uh, that way if someone needs to look it up, they can. Uh, real quick, before I close this out, I'll show you an update on the stuff that I got. Just a quick little update. Like I said, uh, rear springs, obviously still here. Had those in the last video. And then the front coils. And then some 650 pound springs because all they had in stock was the 650 pound front coils and I needed 550. So I just ordered the 550 springs and had them swap them out onto the 650s. That way I didn't have to wait till who knows when for the 550s. Then I also have the Toyo Open Country AT3s. I got the setup right here next to it so you can kind of see a difference. These are a 35 by 12 and a half R17. Super excited to get those on. Uh, the wheels should be here tomorrow, actually. I will be sure to show you guys those in the next video. And it'll most likely be the pinch weld mod. So yeah, just a quick little update on the things that I got. Uh, front coils came in, tires came in. So I have the whole lift, I have the tires. All I'm missing is the wheels to go in the tires. So that concludes this video here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.